Hello and welcome! In this video I want to show you the basic functionalities of Puzzle Your Print, your 3D printing assembly toolkit. First, the installation. You install the add-on as usual, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install Add-on, find the zip file you downloaded, make sure the checkbox is checked, then you can find the add-on panel in the right, so the end panel of the 3D viewport. If you prefer to read more about the add-on, you can test the tutorial you can find under this button. The content will be quite similar to what I show you in this video. But if you only want to work with the add-on, press Initialize first. So what's the basic idea? Puzzle Your Print allows you to cut models in pieces and add connectors for simple assembling later. In order to do that, the add-on generates a bunch of connector called objects. Let's select the cube, maybe position the 3D cursor and press Add Connector. Let's position the connector and press Apply. Now we have two objects, one with a little stick attached and one with a hole. So when you print them, you can reassemble them later easily. The add-on consists of four drop-down panels. Add Exchange Apply, Special Apply, Mapping Order Visibility and the Build Volume drop-down. Let's see what all of those settings are doing. Most of the time you will interact with Add Exchange Apply. In the top part you find the Add and Delete buttons. Here are the Copy and Paste System buttons, Exchange and Settings from Active. The Settings part which will influence the appearance of the connectors and the apply buttons for finalizing the cut and the connectors. The special apply menu offers three ways of applying connectors if you need more control than the standard apply methods offer. Mapping, as in the mapping order visibility dropdown, is the affiliation of the connector to the center object, which will be cut. This means the connector is parented to the center object but it also means the boolean modifiers, which are eventually doing the cutting, will be already placed on the center object. When you add a connector, it will always be mapped to the selected object. When you have another connector selected, or the build volume for example, then the new connector will be mapped to the last object you used. You can see or change this object in the top of the Add Exchange Apply dropdown or just select the new center object before adding. Pressing Unmap will unmap a connector. Or select a connector and shift select another center object and press Remap Connector to Active. Visibility can mean two things. Either I don't want to see them anymore, so toggle the visibility of either the selected or all with these buttons. Or you can toggle the boolean modifier visibility. If you also want to toggle the inlay visibility, check the checkbox. But note, working with visibility on makes Blender very slow, so I recommend to only use it to check the right position of connectors. By the way, you can also control the modifier visibility and mapping during adding and exchange with these two checkboxes. With the order settings, you can change the order in which the connectors are applied to the model. The number above the connectors signalizes the position of the connectors in the modifier stack of the center object. Click up or down to move the connectors in the stack, but I guess you will rarely do this. Last but not least, the Build Volume button produces a wireframe cube with three array modifiers in the dimensions you can set here in centimeters. You control the arrays here after the creation. It is great to see how much real estate you have, otherwise it does nothing. Before we are starting to add connectors, let's talk first about the global scale, because it should be the first thing considering when working in scale. This is a normal start scene in Blender. The cube is 2 meters, but it actually feels like 2 centimeters, and when you export it as STL file, you will see it's actually 2 millimeters in the slicer software. You need to scale it up by 10 in the slicer or 
during the blender export to have at least a 2 cm cube. That's why we tend to work in larger scale, interpreting one blender meter as one millimeter in reality. When you work in this scale, set the global scale to 10. Then the added connectors will be bigger and all gizmos will work nicer. And especially the oversize will have a constant value throughout your projects. Okay, let's make some connectors and see what we can do and influence. There are four connector modes. Stick, male-female, flat cut and planner. Stick produces three parts. Two daughters of the original object and a stick to connect them. That's my favorite. If something doesn't fit, you only need to reprint the stick part. Male-female produces a male and a female child. Flat only cuts the object in half without any connectors. Planner is made for puzzle-like tasks. They can have many connectors and several rows of them too. Let's start with them. First choose one of the 16 connector types and leave the rest to default and see what we get. When you have a connector selected, you can change its appearance with the gizmos. The green ring sets the connector scale. See the values change in the panel to the right. The up arrow controls the height of the connector. The right and left arrows control the right and left offset. This is the distance between the connector part and the outer parts of this connector. With this wavy one you control the line length and with this the line count. When you have at least two lines you will also see the gizmo for the line distance. This last one is the oversize. The oversize value is designed to compensate for printing inaccuracies. Moreover, typically a 3D printer, especially FDM printers, print a bit too big, about 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters. This is not much, but enough to cause problems. This value will be the difference between needing a knife or a hammer or a too loose connection. For me, an oversized value of 0.02 produces very tight connectors maybe too tight for cube-shaped connectors. However, 0.05 is already too loose. Please try it for your own printer by printing a test sample. While we are talking about general things, as you saw the values in the panel change when you use the gizmos. However, the connectors will not change when you change the values in the panel. The panel acts more like a storage for settings, from which connectors are generated. You can, for example, copy settings from connectors to the panel by pressing Active to Settings. When you then select another connector, you can paste these settings by pressing Exchange. By the way, also the newly added connectors will be generated based on the settings in the panel. Some settings can only be changed from the menu. For the planner, this is for example the stopper option. This produces a step in the connector. After printing, the two pieces will stop sliding into each other at the right spot. This is very handy for wall mounts, architecture or any time you want to hide the puzzle connectors. When activated, the stopper height option in the panel becomes available, as well as the down arrow gizmo. Let's talk about the settings for the single connectors. Stick, male, female and of the main cut and a single and inlay objects. The main cut makes, well, the main cut. The larger inlay produces the hole and the smaller one makes a male connector part. The inlay can be a cube, cylinder or a cone. They are not selectable by default. I recommend treating the whole connector as just one object. Also here you can change the connector scale with the green gizmo and the cut thickness with the other green one. The cut thickness should be in the range of your oversize. The inlay size is set by the blue cube in the middle and the oversize with the bright blue one on top. Additionally, you have settings for beveling the inlays. The bevel offset and when this is not zero, the bevel segments. The red arrow controls the z-scale of the inlay. Cone has additional gizmos for the top and bottom radius. But you need to set the top radius to a higher value than zero and exchange to tweak the top one. You can also change the number of words in the cone and cylinders. 
change the amount of words in the panel and exchange the connector to see the effect. A similar setting exists for the second type of main cut, joint cuts. The joint cut is inspired by typical hip constructions of action figures, but you can use them for many things like tails, head, arms. They are sometimes tricky to position and scale correctly. It's absolutely okay to go into edit mode to do adjustments. For example, move or scale along the local Z axis, so press Z and Z again. Don't forget to position the cursor on the origin of the main plane and set the pivot point to 3D cursor to work relative to the rotation center of the joint. Finally, applying is a process to finalize the cutting and adding the connectors. With apply connectors you can apply the selected connectors. Apply all will apply all connectors mapped to the center object. The cut everything option is important when you work with overlapping connectors. A puzzle for example. If cut everything is not checked, we are not getting our desired puzzle. This is because after the first connector is applied, the second connector is only mapped to one puzzle strip. Cut everything will make the planner in apply all ignore the mapping and cut everything it touches. The single connectors don't do this in the apply all mode. But when you use apply connectors, be aware that after each apply step all connectors are remapped to the object they touch. So when they touch too much, the add-on is maybe confused. Just be aware and look out for the warning connectors didn't cut through. Special apply includes three different operators. Single connector to multiple objects allows to connect two different objects. Shift select the objects first and then shift select the connector last and press the button. You can also choose to ignore the main cut. Planner to multiple is for cases like when you forgot to set the cut everything option. Shift select the objects and then shift select the connector last and press the button. Multiple planner to objects its a bit a legacy before cut everything option existed. Select all planner connectors and the object last. Press the button. Keep in mind the add-on is working around the boolean modifier. So you have the same restrictions. Use manifold objects. Use the 3D printing add-on in Blender to check or correct for that. Also, Puzzle Your Print will ignore all other modifiers. So have all modifiers applied before applying the connectors. If you scale the connector with shortcut S as usual in Blender, at least shortly click on the green ring to reset the scale. Otherwise, the oversize will be off. Another setting I didn't mention yet is the solver option. It's a solver in the boolean modifier. Typically, exact is great, but slow. However, when the oversize of the planner is too big, some planners show this ugly self-intersection, then the exact makes problems. Try the fast solver to still get a result. The weird geometry stays, but it, it might just work. So now you know everything there is to know about Puzzle Your Print. You are ready to go into Blender and cut your models into little pieces. So as always, enjoy!